Hi everybody, this is Murugan. Happy to present another video. This video explains you the physical settlement in derivative markets. If you see NSE, BSE recently moving towards physical settlement as per the guidance of SEBI. So people asking this question to me, Murugan, why margins are increasing? And is it physical settlement makes the floor a lot more transparent? And if you ask me, uh, it, be it leads to a perfect competition and open interest data become a lot more relevant and pre expiry rally or post expiry rally can hint uh, you know a market direction a stronger hands cannot take an undue, undue advantage just because of the muscle power let me tell you things one by one as we move forward let me quickly explain what is settlement and then what is cash and physical settlement so that you can appreciate the concept first of all what is settlement Let's say if you, uh, if you and me meet in an equity market, I mean a spot market, I mean a cash market. Me being a buyer, I get asset from you and you get a cash from me. So end of the day, I have to make a full payment and you will be getting the cash and you have to deliver the asset which I get it. So that work is called a settlement. And who takes care of that? Exchange. And if you look at the future market, it is quite different. Because me being a buyer, I'm not actually buying asset from you. And you being a seller, you're not actually selling asset to me. Rather, we are trading rights to buy and rights to sell. So if you look at uh, you know, uh, what I get end of the day, on a trading day, buyer gets rights to buy the Infosys and seller gets rights to sell the Infosys. So in what way it is different from equity market? Equity market, we talk about product equity but in future market we talk about rights to buy and rights to sell so what happens on following days Morgan? so sooner you and me make a deal if a price increases me being a buyer i'm benefited out of the contract in what way Morgan? look i got a damn rights to buy the asset at 750 if a price becomes 755 i can still take a product from you at 750 so i'm indirectly benefited by that five rupees because of the contract. Let's say if I don't have a contract, I have to pay 755 to buy Infosys. Because of this contract, I'm still taking a product from you at 750. That 5 rupees difference, exchange will adjust on a day-to-day -day basis to avoid counterparty risk. So we call that as MTM. So remember, as the price becomes 760, I will be given with another round of 5 rupees from your account. But if a price decreases, I supposed to give money back to you because me being a buyer, got 10 rupees, returned that 6 rupees to you being a seller because price back to 754. If a price becomes 751, you get another round of 3. 748, another round of 3. 745, another round of 3. Remember next day if a price becomes 740, you get another round of 5. What happens? In total, you got 10 rupees from my account. Yes, it is fair because I agreed to buy a shares from you at 750. Now the price is 740. So if you, if you look at the cash settlement on a last day, what happens? So now let me explain what is cash settlement. So when it comes to cash settlement on a last day, basically exchange got nothing but to ensure all contracts become expired. What happens to you and me? See, we, we supposed to get the difference, but we already got it through MTM process. So nothing happens to us. Then you can ask another question. Murugan, you being a buyer, you got a rights to buy asset from me. No, what happens to that? Remember, I don't take asset from you. Rather, I got a cash difference from you. So that difference can help me to buy shares elsewhere. But in this case, the price went down. So now, you me, you, you being a seller at panic, that Murugan, I got a rights to sell at 750. Now the price is 740. What happens? You sell the asset locally at 740. If you wish to sell the asset, you can still sell this asset at 740. But the difference in 10 rupees because of the contract is already given to you. So still you are not under a panic mode. As per your expectation, it is already settled. But if you look at the physical settlement, it is different. As per my commitment, a last day, I have to take a share from you. And you have to deliver shares to me. So on a physical settlement, if I'm, a, if I'm holding a long positions in futures, so I have a right to buy, I have to take the shares from you by making a full payment. So that is the reason why if you see a margins getting spiked ahead of the expiry day. So last two, three days, the exchange keep increasing the 
margins. So what happens going forward, Morgan? See, settlement is no more on the last Thursday. Although expiry happens to be the last Thursday, but people tend to unwind their positions a week before even because of high margin pressure. So uh, in what way the physical settlement makes things a lot more transparent? Look, me being a future buyer, I'm not just getting away with the cash difference. I have to take a delivery. So physical movement of shares going from one place to another place. So a stronger hands cannot simply manipulate the price. Let me explain this in detail. Okay. Now look at this one. <coughs> uh, now there is a big question mark. Which one is good? A physical settlement or cash settlement? Let's say me being a, a future buyer. What I going to do is a day one I buy future. Let's say I am a strong hand. Okay. Uh, a buy future. After I buy future, the same day I buy equities. And another day I buy another equity. A third day again I buy equity. A fourth day I buy an equity. Fifth day I, I buy an equity. By doing what exactly happens? So indirectly if you look at the share price in the market, it starts going up over a period of time. The day one, day two, day three, day four. The price keeps moving up. Okay, Morgan, why the big fall in price? Don't worry about it. But day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, as uh, as I buy shares in the equity market, equity market, equity market, I mean, I'm talking about a strong hands who's chasing stock for no reasons. Morgan, will people chase? No. Let me first explain. He first bought a future and then purposefully he's buying shares, buying shares, buying shares in the equity market. So if he's unnecessarily buying today, tomorrow he becomes a seller. I understand. But let's see what exactly happens here. Day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, every day he bought it. As a result, the price of moved significantly higher. So on a last day, when it comes, let's say day 5 is an expiry day. What happens on expiry day? So just because I got a future position, I will be given with a good amount of cash difference as a profit. Remember, I'm not given with shares. I'm just given with the cash balance. And so-called buyer may become a seller. Remember, I being a person who bought shares for so long, so I have ample amount of shares with me, which I bought it just to inflate the price. So eventually I start supplying the shares by next day. So when I supply the shares, equally the price tends to come down. So when I aggressively push the price up, I'm good enough to push the price down. So my supply will eventually make the price to go down. This is the unnecessary volatility happens. Okay, now Murugan price back to normal. Remember, although a price back to normal, although a price back to normal, his long futures would have given him a good profit. Just because he being a strong hand, he was actually pushing the price all the way up till the expiry date. So a post expiry, if you see a price can come down because of his supply and equity. But that may not affect him because the cash settlement is already done. Morgan, what happens when it comes to physical settlement? So if you look at the physical settlement, okay, when it comes to physical settlement on an expiry day, you are not actually running away with the cash difference. Rather, you are given with all their shares. So what happens tomorrow? So you got, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 into, let's say, 5x of quantity you bought in equity market, okay, to push the price up. And now remember, Accordingly, you are now having a shares from the future market also. So the future position, whatever you bought, is also actually giving you shares. So by tomorrow, you don't have only 5 equity, you may have a 10 equities. So what happens, hence the buyer need to double sell the market to make, to neutral the his positions. So sometime, unnecessarily if you bought a stock, to inflate or to gain the future returns, it is not possible by tomorrow. So the price tends to fall even more than the normal days. That leaves you under trouble, being a stronger hands. So uh, stronger hands cannot take any ad due advantage out of this. See, I am. what happens, like, you know, first day I bought a shares, uh, futures, and next day I'm buying shares, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, buying, 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 buying. If I push the price so high, Remember, by tomorrow, I get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, shares from the future settlement again. So that is the reason why we say it is no more due advantage out of that. So what are the key takeaway from here? 
So open interest become lot more reliable. So uh, people cannot simply manipulate the price. So a typical hedging process or the speculations takes place when it comes to uh, you know the derivative markets. Stronger hands are the stronger hands. There are so many ways to uh, you know they they show their muscle power. But still now this undue advantage is taken out of them. And pre and post expiry price need to be uh, closely monitored. I hope the technical analysis become lot more relevant after this. A stock derivatives may suffer, uh, you know, liquidity issue because since this undue advantage is gone out of the, you know, uh, stronger hands, they may not be interested in playing in the equity market. Uh, remember, for you as a common man, as a trader, let me tell you one thing: uh, uh, three, four days ahead of expiry, uh, your broker may ask you to unwind the positions. Otherwise, your margin will shoot up. So better you exit positions at two, three days before. The cost will increase. Lot more auctions, uh, auction market become lot more relevant after the you know expiry days. So and uh, especially the market become less exposed to manipulations. So I hope this video helped you. Uh, I hope uh, my points also clear for you. And if not, you can see the video once or twice. Otherwise, you make your views in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video. And you see a lot more videos in our YouTube channels as well. Thank you.